Uh, one of the parts of the House Detective that has made a change, as you know, we've been on uh, quite a few years here in the Southern Nevada area, and that is perhaps the use of a, a law firm when it comes to protecting your interests. And in that regard, I am very, very pleased that we have a company that specializes in real estate law. There are four partners, two of whom are here in Vegas and two of them from Southern California. We're going to meet one of the Southern California gentlemen, uh, Adam Krolikowski, and uh, the other from Las Vegas, uh, Chris Sullivan, and another interesting subject. So this is what we uh, recorded earlier in the week. Thanks, Rich. Hi, once again, I'm Chris Sullivan from Sullivan, Brown, Krolikowski, and Gordon. Sitting next to me is my partner, Adam Krolikowski. Morning. Today we're going to talk about hiring a contractor. In the last episode, we talked about buying a FISBO. We went through the whole process about how to identify the house, how to get it into, into escrow, and how to close the deal. Now that you've got the house, what's the next step? Most of the time, if you're going to buy the house to make some money on it, you're going to have to do a little bit of fixing up. Oftentimes, the best money in, in, in a real estate deal such as this is going to be to be a fixer-upper. So you've got to go out and you've got to find some competent people to do the work. Not everybody is like Norm Abrams and has their own tools and their own skill sets. So this is how we're going to start you off. The first thing we're going to consider is how do you find a contractor? Now, the obvious way is to open up the Yellow Pages and, and just start calling people and see uh, you know, if you can find a competent contractor. But I think really the best way to do it is just word of mouth. It seems to me that the, the people that are really good get talked about quite a bit, especially in this genre of fixing up houses. Whenever you uh, come across a few names, you're going to want to do two or three different things. You're going to want to first, you're going to want to check that they're licensed, they're bonded, call the state contractor's board, maybe even visit the state contractor's board and pull their file. Sometimes uh, you'll find contractors that, that might have a complaint or two, but I wouldn't be so, uh, so quick to judge them on that because everybody knows there's crackpots out there that file complaints for no reason. Take a good, solid look at the contractor. When, you, when you're placing something out for bid, let's, let's say you're going to tile the floors. You're going to want to get two, maybe three bids. Interview the people. Go out in, into the community, ask for references, and go see their work. And if you can do it, go see a job in progress. See them actually doing the work. Because we, we can't tell you how many times we've had cases, right, Adam, where they come in and people say, well, I went and looked at, at three different jobs. Well, guess what? Those people never did the job. So those are some of the things you want to look for. Also, if you're pressed for time, let's say you want to get it done now and you don't have time to do that substantial legwork, then there are other things you can look at that are very important. Is a person properly licensed? We went over that. You want to make sure they're bonded. Do they have the proper work compensation insurance in place? And then you can call up the bonding company and make sure the bond hasn't already been leaned against and the bond is still, still good, and then you can go from there knowing that you know, sometimes you don't have time to do all the legwork. So if a person is properly insured and their license is in order, generally they're going to be able to get the job done. But the next step is, you know, what are you agreeing to? You know, what are you going to fix up? You, know, you have to have a specific plan of what you want to do in the home. You have to stick to your budget and you have to find a contractor that can work within that budget. And you know, have to decide, how am I going to do this job? Right? That's right. Oftentimes the contractors are going to want to say, well, just write us a check for X amount. We'll go buy you the materials, and then we'll install the materials. Sometimes they want half the money up front. I think the best way to do it, if you're going to save some money and you're in this for the profitability, is go buy your own materials. There's plenty of places out there, tile stores, hard, different hardware stores that are having sales. You might be able to get the material cheaper than the contractor would sell it for you because he's going to mark it up, and, there's, and just pay for installation. When you go for that installation contract, you want to have a beginning date and an end date. And you want to have penalties so that if they pass those dates, you know they're going to be penalized. That's going to put them, you know, hold their feet to the fire and make sure that they get that job done on time. Last but not least, you want to make sure about the type of job you're doing. Is it a simple remodel or are you changing something structurally? Whatever the job is, make sure in the contract it identifies who's supposed to pull the permits. Because at the end, even though you're hiring somebody to do the work, you're still going to be considered the owner-builder. 
So you don't want to do something where an inspector will come along and stop your job or later on you try to sell the property and find out you did something that wasn't proper or wasn't properly permitted because then you have to go back and then on the back end you're going to absorb more costs that you didn't see. That's right. Always check with the city or the county, whoever's in charge, which, wherever you live, to make sure that the permits are pulled correctly, that all your ducks are in a row. If you're not really sure about that, once again, don't be afraid to make a phone call. Call us, call another attorney, and, and get it done right. Finally, there, when you, ultimately, whenever you get work done, there's going to be little things wrong. There's going to be a, a, a missing thing here or a missing thing there or a bad cut here or there. You're gonna, it's, you, you create what's called a punch list, and you go through that punch list item by item, and then you, bring, you call your contractor back up before you give him the last bit of money and say, I want all of these things corrected. Typically, what you're going to do is hold back about 10% of the total, per, the total uh, price of the repair, and you're going to say, once this is done, you'll get your 10%. That's going to give them the incentive to come back, and that's going to ensure good service. Exactly. And also, last but not least, you're going to be able to trust people, they're going to be good contractors, but get it in writing. If you make a change, get it in writing. If something's going to cost more, get it in writing. It makes it a lot easier if something goes wrong for us to help you if we have a written document telling us what was supposed to happen. Like we always say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Get it done right the first time and you won't be in litigation. Thanks for Thanks. watching. Thanks again.